All right, guys, number five. This one is looking at an inductive sensor, but we're gonna switch up when we're gonna grab the analog M12. Looks exactly the same as the discrete output M12, but this one has threads all the way to the end, and it's gonna provide us with either a zero to 10 volt DC voltage out, or it's gonna give us a four to 20 milliamp current out. The voltage comes out of one of the output terminals, the current comes out of the other output terminal. Okay, so it's an analog output based on the proximity of the, the unit in front of us, or in this case, we're gonna be looking at uh, the thickness of the steel in front of the, the, the sensor. Previous labs we were looking at, we were looking at the surface area, now we're looking at the thickness. Okay, all kinds of noise here, but let's disregard all that. Okay, these guys right here for uh, the technical data for that M12 analog switch, well, we can go to our data sheet here. Here's the M12 with the analog output. Again, it's the one with the threads all the way to the end. It has two outputs. There's output Q1 and output Q2 that we can make use of now. Okay, you can see the one has a voltage output, one has a current output on this thing, this symbol here. As we scroll down, we can see that on Q1, that's going to give us our 0 to 10 volts DC and Q2 is gonna give us our four to 20 milliamps current output. Each of these guys uh, has its, all, its own cut sheets. Again, this is a little bit different than um, the, the other M12. It looks like the sensing distance is the same, six mils. Standard calibrating plate is exactly the same. Operating voltage is 24 volts DC. Idle current is 12 milliamps, so even when it's off, it's gonna be pulling current. We can see here, here's our voltage output, zero to 10 volts. And then here's our current output, four to 20 milliamps. Okay, so it's either gonna give us zero to 10 or it's gonna give us four to 20 out. Okay, as we scroll through, oh, sorry guys. <clears throat> Let's go back to the lab. There we go. Okay, so as we scroll through, uh, we're gonna be using the galvanized steel. So we're gonna use the uh, number five all the way through. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this guy up again. Remember that the sensor has to be flush mounted against the piece of plastic. The back of the travel needs to be at zero so that any movement here corresponds to the movement here. And we're gonna connect the, the M12 <clears throat> to give us the zero to 10 volt output first. Okay, so we're gonna connect up to Q1 to our meter. Okay, no load needed whatsoever. We're just gonna connect up the voltmeter to Q1. Okay, so let's first take a look at uh, Q1 going to the voltmeter. And we're looking at a zero to 10 volt signal. And the nominal sensing distance of this guy is six mils. Should we, so we should see zero to 10 volts DC outputting for a zero to six mils nominal sensing distance. Half of that, right, would be what? Three mils giving us half of that voltage, right? Again, not exactly perfect, but pretty pretty good for looking at this the distance of the object in front of this sensor. Okay, so it's providing a, a varying output based on how close the piece of steel is close to your inductive sensor. If we take a look at the other connection, so you're going to turn this sensor off and reconnect it with the ammeter. You're looking at DC current, so put it in the milliamp port of the meter and make sure that you have it set for uh, DC current. And then looking there again, we have six mils of nominal travel. So we should see four to 20 milliamps corresponding to four to 20 milliamps corresponding to our zero to six mils of travel. Okay. Remember that halfway is three. Three should give us a, a current of 12 milliamps. Remember that this range is a four, is a a 16 milliamp range, like if we drop this down to zero, then it would be a zero to 16 range. But again, we have an elevated zero, so our halfway point here is gonna be 12 milliamps. Excellent, so zero to six mils should provide us with four to 20 milliamps output. Let's take a look at how to hook this up in the lab. All right guys, so let's take a look at this analog inductive sensor. So we've got our 24 volts, same as always, we're gonna go zero volts, to your common, positive to your 24 volts. Again, out in the field, these guys are gonna be the brown for the positive, the blue for the negative. 
And then what are we going to do? We're going to look at voltage first. So I've got this guy set for uh, DC volts. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to, now I've got this live, but I want you guys to do this uh, while it's dead and then turn the power on. Why do I want to do that? Because you guys keep blowing up meters, not on voltage, but on current. But you clearly have no idea what you're doing with the meter. So just take your time, do all of this when the power is off and then connect your meter in. Okay, any issues, any smoking, stop it right away and turn the power on. So we need to have uh, Q1 as the output for the voltage. So Q1 is going to the voltage. Still nothing because I need to connect my common here. Doesn't matter where I connect my common in. And now I see my DC voltage. I don't see my DC voltage yet because I need to put in my target here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in the number five for the galvanized steel. I'm going to bring this bad boy right into the back here with the zero and it looks like still seeing nothing. Oh, cause I'm an idiot. So look at this. I'm telling you to be careful of the meter and look at this. I've got this still on current like a donkey. So we're on voltage. So meet sure that you know where you're doing <laughs> before you connect everything up. All right, guys. So now we've got minimal voltage. So we got 0.26 volts DC. Okay, that's with the target right in front of the analog sensor. The target distance, nominal sensing distance of this guy is six mils. So we're gonna back this up six mils and this is gonna go from zero. And you can see that the voltage is slowly climbing. And when we get to six mils, Zam, there is 10 volts, right? So we got zero to 10 volts. Going from zero to, can't get it to stay, there we go, okay. So zero to 10 volts going from zero to six mils. And it's a linear output. If I go to uh, three mils, let's see if we can get three mils here. We should get five volts. Okay, so come on, there we go. So we got five volts there and that's roughly about three mils. One and a half should be, one and a half mils should give me half of that. Should give me two and a half volts. Okay, so there's one and a half and I'm getting two and a half volts. So it's a linear output of DC voltage going from zero all the way up to ten volts DC. Okay? So your PLC could be set up to look at a zero to ten volt DC input. It may also be able to see a four to 20 milliamp output. So we're gonna change some wires around here and look at our current output. But now you can see that based on the distance that the target metal is from the sensor, this is now giving us a linear output signal as a DC voltage that mimics that distance of the target from the inductive sensor. Okay, so now we're gonna switch it up and do current, right? Because we've clearly seen the zero to 10 volts DC. So what we'll do is we'll keep the power to the sensor here. With yours, yours is easy enough. Mine, I have to ramp up the voltage and everything and I'm lazy. So I'm gonna keep mine powered up. Please turn off your sensor as you're changing the different leads, okay? Now that nothing is connected into my, sen my meter here, I'm now gonna change over to uh, DC current. So I've got DC current there and it's gonna tell, gonna make like auto range on its own. Okay, with yours, you've got to make sure that you go into the appropriate terminal. Mine has two terminals. I got a 2 amp and I got a 20 amp. Well, I'm looking at 20 milliamps. So I'm going to go into the 2 amp input. On your meters, you're going to go into the 200 milliamp uh, probe setting. You can see that these guys just go right into the meter. So there's no need to fill around holding meter leads in place. And now the output for current is off of a different uh, terminal. From that lab, you can see that Q2 is the output for current. Okay, and as it comes in, you can see that it auto ranges and went from microamps to milliamps. Okay, be careful. Make sure that you put it in the right setting. Have the wire from the sensor from Q2 going into the 200 milliamp uh, probe opening. Uh, and don't change meter settings while it's live. Otherwise, you're going to smoke the fuse. Okay? If you see nothing on the, on the meter, either you're a donkey like me and you connected up wrong, 
or you've changed the meter setting while it was live and you've smoked the fuse. All right, so now let's take a look. This is my six mils and I'm getting 20 milliamps. And if I push this all the way in, there's my zero. There's my four, roughly four, right? It's not exactly four, but there's my four milliamps. So you can see here as I go from four, sorry, zero to six mils, I'm getting my four to 20 milliamps of current. Okay, so now this is an analog output current going from four to 20 milliamps. Why do they go from four to 20 rather than zero to 16? Uh, that elevated four tells us that it's actually working. Okay, again, if I go uh, halfway at three, then I should see 12 milliamps. So that's three mils there, and I'm getting half of the output signal. There. Okay, so this is all we're gonna see for this lab, but it's pretty cool. Going from zero to six mils, we can go from four to 20 milliamps. All right, guys, thanks.